Thank you very much. Um, I'm speaking on post-traumatic arthritis. So don't undertake total knees for post-traumatic uh, OA lightly. There are lots of challenges when you deal with these. They are younger, more male patients. There can be previous scars, hardware, bony defects, malalignment, stiffness, ligament deficiency, mal and non-unions, fibrosis, and maltracking. In terms of scores, range of motion, and survivorship, there's no significant difference with standard uh, total knees, or it could be slightly lower, and you need to warn your patients. However, the complication rates are significantly higher and they include infections, stiffness, the need for MUA, ruptures of tendons, wound complications, and then on a longer term basis, osteolysis, polythene wear, instability, and loosening can occur. For this, meticulous planning is required. As I said, don't underestimate. You may need all the imaging available to you, do a proper infection workup of ESR, CRP, assess the soft tissues. Very important to know where the scars are. And if there is hardware, whether you need specific instruments to get rid of that hardware. And then move on to select what implant you're going to use. Most of the times you'll use a PS implant or whatever is your usual choice. Occasionally you may need more constraint. Hinges may be required sometimes if there's bone loss, if there's instability or the patient is real low demand. Tumor prosthesis are sometimes very rarely required if there's a large defect and if there's massive non-union. Keep augments, stems, sleeves on standby. The next query is, should you do it in one stage or two stage if you have implants? Well, this would depend on the soft tissue condition and the presence of scars. If there, is, uh, uh, if there are extensive implants or if they've been present for many years, and if there's a concern regarding reinfection, you might want to stage the procedure and then do the second stage six to eight weeks later, having removed the implants and send material for culture. So the message, friends, is in post-traumatic OA, the situation can be extremely challenging and variable. The patients are younger, more demanding, careful, and uh, uh, planning is very important. Technical challenges can be plentiful. There's a very high risk of complications, and you must warn your patient that the outcome, range of motion, and survivorship may be lower. And now with that, I'd like to just uh, show a whole series of examples because we haven't seen too many x-rays this morning. So let's move on to these cases. 30-year-old doctor, 16 years after she had a fracture, the condyle went missing, presented with severe pain, and we've done a bicompartmental knee arthroplasty. This was a conservatively treated tibial plateau fracture, no major deformity, and a straightforward PS total knee. This was a patient with a lateral plateau fracture on the left side with OA on the right side with a severe windswept deformity. 80 year old, simultaneous navigated total knees using long stems uh, on both sides. This was a strange surgery done by somebody, HA granules used to elevate the lateral uh, plateau fracture left with a residual valgus deformity and uh, we couldn't really get rid of all the granules though we tried some of them remained and they pr produce a terrible uh, looking x-ray but the patient did very well uh, with a mobile bearing this is a valgus deformity two years after a malunited lateral plateau fracture so you can see the plate and the large number of screws so what we did was use two separate uh, incisions which were wide apart and you can see the yellow lines marking them. Um, so we removed the implant at the same time as doing a total knee and it went on to heal very well. You can see the alignment has been well restored. A malunited lateral plateau fracture again with valgus OA, 76 year old male. So in this, we were concerned about the environment in which the surgery was done. So we removed the implants first in the first stage, sent material for uh, culture sensitivity, cleaned up all the screw holes, and then six weeks later proceeded to do a 
a straightforward navigator turtle knee with a long stem to bypass the screw holes which can act as stress risers. This was a malunited proximal tibial fracture uh, in a middle-aged patient with various osteoarthritis. So here we do a closed wedge osteotomy. So first um, we would do an, uh, a release medially and bring it from 20 to 10 and then whatever is the remainder we would remove a wedge of bone from the apex of the deformity. So a closed wedge osteotomy followed by a long stem to correct the alignment. Moving to the femoral side, this is a malunited distal femoral fracture, another malunited uh, distal femoral fracture with severe valgus OA where we use the stem on the tibia and use a lateral approach. A malunited distal femoral fracture again, this was too, too much to leave alone so we had to do a closed wedge osteotomy plating and use a long stem. This was before sleeves were available to us. This is a non-union in a 74-year-old lady with medial OA where we've used a tumor type prosthesis. And the last case is this infected non-union where we put in this uh, rod with a cement spacer followed by a tumor prosthesis. Thank you very much.